Hello, my dear friends. I am Prashant Mamani, and I warmly welcome all of you to Study IQ. I hope you all are doing good. And today we are going to talk about INS Calvary, the one that you can see on your screen. Dear friends, it gives me immense pride to be the one to share details regarding INS Calvary with all of you. And I'm sure by the end of this lecture, uh, you would be feeling the same pride and respect for our government as well as our Indian Navy. We will today talk about what INS INS Calvary is all about. Uh, we will see, uh, we'll go through the history of uh, Indian Navy and uh, we will also see where do we stand and what is our future when it comes to our defense. With this dear friends, uh, uh, I would like to share some details regarding our pen drive and tablet courses for different exams. Uh, Study IQ provides uh, different pen drive and tablet courses. We cover UPSC, SSC, bank and all government exams uh, of state and national level. To know more about our pen drive and tablet courses, check out studyiq.com. Just in case if you have any question queries, you have chat support available on our portal as well as you have these numbers on your screen you can feel free and give us a call dear friends uh, you might have heard about uh, this uh, tiger sharks right they are known as macro predator shark and uh, you find them in tropical as well as warm coastal waters around the world here is a small picture that will help you understand where do you find them and here you can see this is uh, indian ocean and you find them in arabian sea as well as bay of bengal and uh, other parts here you can see in uh, uh, warm pacific uh, waters as well as atlantic waters and uh, dear friends uh, this is also this tiger sharks uh, they are also um, they are termed as very curious and aggressive particularly when they are in, in in contact with human beings uh, because uh, they are number two when it comes to attacks and fatalities of human beings as you can see they are huge in size 16 feet and they weigh more than 1400 pounds which is which is itself makes it a very gigantic shark uh, with this dear friends uh, the, one of the reason why they are known as macro predator shark as they are omnivore and they eat most marine animals, terrestrial animals and even man-made garbage floating at sea. Now, uh, as per IUCN, uh, right, they are falling in the category of near threatened. And you'd be wondering why I am sharing this sort of details regarding tiger sharks, isn't it? Because uh, this lecture is supposed to be of INS Calvary. See here, there are some of uh, some things are important for you to know. Uh, many times you find questions pertaining to this sort of uh, near threatened or critically endangered species, um, and uh, IUCN is uh, is an organization that keeps a red list in which you find different animals, flora and fauna in different categories. So here you have important thing for your MCQ. And one of the main reasons why I started this lecture with this tiger shark is because in the language of Malayalam, Calvary means tiger shark, right? A tiger shark is a sheer symbol of agility, strength and predatory prowess. With this difference, I would like to introduce all of you to INS Calvary. It is considered as one of the most potent or one of the most, you can say, top of the range platform uh, that has ever been constructed in our country India and uh, it is also regarded as uh, one of the most uh, you can say prestigious acquisition of Indian Navy now you'd be thinking that how we can take it right uh, why we should believe that this is a prestigious acquisition as well as potent platform uh, for that I have to share some technical details with you guys and uh, I have it for you in uh, next slides uh, right but before that i would like to share some basic details regarding it uh, uh, the the concept of this uh, submarine was uh, you can say the inception period or it was conceived back in 2006 when first cutting of steel took place at mdl mdl yard 11875 it started cutting the steel for this submarine back in 2006 and uh, one of the most interesting thing in terms of technicality is the boot together modular approach of construction what is boot together boot together here means you are uh, welding five big pieces of steel right you have different five big huge pieces of steel and then you are welding it together and this is uh, this in, in terms of technicality 
it is a very challenging thing in itself and uh, luckily we have or you can say that we are capable enough to uh, weld all these five components and we have mastered this boot together modular approach of construction as well uh, it was on 2014 right uh, this 30th july 2014 when this boot together of ins calvary was done and you might have heard about this term scorpene now what is scorpene all about scorpene is basically a conventional powered submarine it's not a nuclear powered submarine it works on electric city as well as diesel right so that's why it is known as conventional it is not known as non-conventional so remember this thing scorpene is a conventional power submarine and uh, specification includes that uh, it, it it weighs uh, somewhere around 1500 tons and it can go up to the depth of 300 meters 300 meters is not bad at all imagine the water pressure that this boat has to take when it goes down 300 meters with this dear friends uh, some basic details uh, some interesting facts regarding INS Calvary or Calvary uh, the name was given by uh, Mrs. Ritu Shravat uh, Miss uh, Ritu Shravat is wife of uh, uh, RK Shravat and uh, the reason why I'm sharing these things is that uh, it helps you more in KBC sort of competitions but you never know many times you find this sort of questions as well in different uh, competitive exams uh, so keep this thing in mind that uh, it is a sanskrit uh, it comes from this uh, uh, sanskrit invocation uh, from atharva ved and uh, it it basically is goddess aditi the mother of sun uh, god right sun god surya that is that we know as aditya in indian language of hindi and uh, it was in 2016 when uh, this uh, IMD, right, uh, they put this ship in the sea. And uh, since then, it has gone through various multiple hurdles, you can say, or uh, it has gone through all these uh, trial schedules and things like that. And it has uh, sailed through it. It has passed all these hurdles. And uh, it was in uh, 2017, um, 21st of September 2017, when... Uh, MLD handed over this INS Calvary to Indian Navy. So all this technical side and all this testing and things uh, were sorted out uh, by 21st September 2017. So it was uh, waiting for an official launch. Now uh, INS Calvary or Calvary is a potent man of war. Now what man of war means? Man of war means a ship that is or a boat that is designed or a ship or a boat that is built for a war right it is for warfare it is for war and here it is very interesting to know this is sort of emblem of this calvary now here you can see a shark the teeth of a shark as well as a hide of a tiger and uh, the motto of this submarine is ever onward this indicates the tilt of uh, or you can say it indicates uh, it it says much about uh, about the staff or the or the or, or the or the people who are going to be on board on this INS Calvary ever onward basically means that they are ready to take any possible challenges uh, that can take place uh, in water and uh, this INS uh, Calvary right uh, it is capable of taking undertaking offensive operations and uh, when you see this uh, maritime warfare spectrum it can do all sort of things it can it can conduct anti-surface warfare it has capabilities of anti-submarine warfare intelligence gathering mine laying and area surveillance basically you can say that uh, uh, the water under which you have INS Calvary things will be uh, things will be done and dusted or you can say the water would be clear uh, there is nothing that can hide from this INS Calvary specifications length 67.5 meter height 12.3 meter you might be thinking that why we are discussing this sort of technical things the reason is dear friends uh, it's not only about INS Calvary it is also about our defense future where we stand at present and where we are heading this lecture will take you through it and uh, i'm sure once we will go through all these technical details and once we will go through the history of uh, our our affairs with submarine you will appreciate the fact that uh, what has been achieved here by india 
is something rare right uh, it has the 360 battery cells each weighing 750 kilo and it powers the extremely silent permanently magnetized pro uh, propulsion motor i'm sure you might have uh, uh, came across this film called ghazi attack and uh, in this film ghazi attack uh, they have uh, they have uh, displayed uh, what it means uh, for a submarine to be silent if you are not silent if you are making noise underwater then there are sonars and other technologies available uh, that can um, that can identify your location and uh, once your location is revealed then um, then then your surprise element is gone as well as uh, your all these capabilities are of no use because you can come under attack it has a uh, two to 1250 kilowatt man diesel engines for rapidly charging this batteries and uh, this this hull and its fins and other things are specifically designed to produce minimum underwater resistance uh, for defense tech savvy enthusiasts right i would like to share some more details regarding ins calvary and they are that it has got this uh, subtix uh, remember the full form of subtix it stands for submarine tactical integrated combat system uh, it carries this low frequency analysis and ranging that is uh, known as LOFR. It is basically a sonar suite. Uh, sonar stands for a sort of scanning technology that you deploy for underwater operations, right? We use radar for aerial things, anything flying in the sky, so you can catch it with your radar. In the same way, sonar uh, provides you the location of things that are submerged. So, in this sense, it has LOFR. This is, uh, uh, you can say, very much helpful for our in Indian Navy personnel. With this, uh, it can, uh, with this uh, LOFR, it can identify, it can uh, classify, or it can, it can find out uh, where these enemy ships are underwater or above the surface of water. And once uh, this classification is done, it has two options with it. It can use this uh, Exosat missiles. The one that you can see here, these are SM-39 Exocet missiles. They are known as uh, flying fish in French. And uh, it can also deploy these torpedoes that you can see here. These are torpedoes that it can carry this submarine. And uh, they are known as uh, SUT, uh, surface and underwater target torpedoes. Just in case uh, if it has to, uh, it has to deploy this self-defense. If, if it wants to protect itself from uh, any sort of attack, then it has also got this mobile C-303S anti-torpedo decoys as well. And all these things makes our INS Calvary one of the best in the world. Now, dear friends, if we go back to the history of our defense uh, sector, or you can say when it comes to protecting our country, we know it very well that uh, under British Raj, uh, things were not that good. Uh, but after independence, uh, um, there was a serious need uh, for India uh, to, to protect itself from any sort of aggressions or any sort of attacks uh, that may come from abroad. And uh, uh, at that point of time, we were not having any sort of experience regarding submarine. And we started with a very modest beginning. You can see here that uh, we were in fact being trained on this HMS uh, Dolphin. Uh, of UK, England uh, in 1962. A small team of officers were trained on this dolphin, the one that you can see on your screen here, right? This is uh, HMS Dolphin. And uh, the first Calvary, right? Uh, this is totally different than what we have uh, achieved today, right? Uh, it is totally different from this 1967 submarine. It was uh, the first one to hoist uh, tricolor or Indian flag. And uh, a bit later on, we got this fox trots uh, and both these boats right both these boats uh, played a very important role in this 1971 indo park war i'm sure you know about indo park war uh, basically after the victory of this indo park war uh, we got a new neighbor uh, a new country uh, came into existence uh, which we know as bangladesh and uh, dear friends at that point of time indian navy played a very pivotal role if we would not be having this uh, uh, this uh, submarines and other uh, naval capacities then uh, it would be very difficult for us to win this war uh, but uh, thank god we have um, been uh, been victorious in this war and then later on we had this uh, sindhu coast class and uh, uh, 
Sisumar uh, class uh, uh, ships uh, or boats uh, being inducted into our Indian Navy and uh, this to induction of this Sisumar class and uh, Sindhu Coast class uh, indicated uh, the achievement of India in terms of technology and firepower. At that point of time, most of the things were being purchased by mostly Russia or uh, USSR. Most of the times, uh, things were coming from many times we used to lease and purchase ships uh, that were nearly having a very small, you can say, date or a very short period of time. Uh, short expiry date because uh, they were being used by uh, Russia or USSR for a very long period of time then we used to have uh, some sort of modification and then uh, we used to go, uh, get all these ships uh, back in 1992 uh, it was uh, MDL which has created this uh, Inus uh, Calvary uh, it was uh, ML MDL uh, they designed the first uh, Indian built submarine INS uh, Sulky and uh, this was a new era this started a new chapter in the history of submarine warfare in our country later on we got a nuclear nuclear powered chakra one in 1998 and chakra two in 2012 from uh, from russia and uh, since then we have leapfrogged uh, you can say we are now um, we are now uh, making submarines uh, uh, by ourselves uh, and this indicates as prime minister has also highlighted uh, he has in fact dedicated this ship uh, to the nation and one of the main reason is that uh, it is a prime example of make in india as you can see that uh, as we have talked about that this is one of the best submarines in the world today at present we have some 13 submarines but most of them are uh, very soon going out of date and uh, it is also said by Indian government that by 2018 we are going to have one more or we are going to add one more uh, Scorpion submarine and uh, by 2021 or 2022 right all five submarines that are in pipeline at present all this uh, Scorpion submarines that are in pipeline at present uh, they will be inducted in Indian Navy by 2021 or 2022 this also uh, demonstrates uh, excellent it indicates or it is a very good example of a fast growing strategic partnership between India and France and uh, why India and France or the partnership of India and France is important because uh, here you find uh, reunion islands right uh, they belong to France so in this way France has uh, France becomes a stakeholder in Indian Ocean uh, apart from that, a couple of uh, weeks ago or a couple of months ago, our Defence Minister, uh, Sri Nirmala Sitharaman, uh, in one of her speech, she said, uh, she, she expressed uh, her concern regarding extra-regional powers building ports in Indian Ocean. Of course, uh, she was talking about China. We know how China is uh, developing this string of pearl around uh, this Indian Ocean, trying to corner India and we know that uh, it has developed ports, uh, dual purpose ports. Uh, one of the biggest concern for India is uh, this dual purpose ports uh, that have been, uh, been constructed by China in Indian Ocean because uh, uh, they will be used, these ports uh, normally in normal times, uh, they will be used for, uh, for merchant navies. But just in case, if, it, if, if China requires, then they can, they can park their... Uh, uh, the nuclear uh, headed uh, submarines as well nuclear capable submarines uh, in in indian ocean which is a matter of concern because uh, once you allow the entry of uh, extra regional powers in indian ocean then for a very long period of time it would be if not impossible then very difficult for us to get rid of them in this waters here and uh, here you can see there are other projects of China, right? Uh, Gwadar port is quite famous for CPEC. Recently, China had its uh, uh, free trade agreement with uh, Maldives, uh, which has uh, raised the ears of our country. Then it is also covering this portion of ASEAN countries. It is developing port in Bangladesh, a very good friend of our country, as well as Myanmar. And uh, needless to say, it uh, this Djibouti is its first, China's first uh, uh, overseas military base and uh, here you can see in Tanzania as well it is building ports and things like that so basically it is trying to cover this whole region of Indian Ocean 
and the Indian Ocean has a special place in the policies of the government of our country. As you can see, it is the only ocean that is named after a country. And uh, if you see the location of uh, our, if you observe the location of our country in terms of Indian Ocean, then you find that uh, it provides us connectivity with uh, with uh, three different continents. Right? Uh, you can get in touch with uh, African African countries as well as Australia, and needless to say, the Asian countries of uh, ASEAN as well as uh, South Asia. Uh, with this, dear friends. Um, Today we know that uh, 21st century is of Asia. It is been said by by leaders and market leaders and businessmen, and everyone appreciates the role of Indian Ocean. We know that uh, it is a main route for all the oil, uh, right? Most of the oil for for Asian countries and Australia and other countries, right? It uh, sails through this portion here. And we also know it is uh, in this portion here, this Gulf of Aden, you have piracy and other things. The way terrorism and other things are spreading around the world, it is very important for us to protect this Indian Ocean and uh, the economic muscle that it can add uh, to our country has been has been identified and we, we, we appreciate and, and we know it very well how much it can benefit as safe clear and clean Indian Ocean right uh, that is uh, unaffected by external powers uh, has a huge potential it carries huge potential for the development of our country and uh, we have recently India has started accepting this term as well Indo-Pacific it has been given by Japan and predominantly by USA USA considers or USA wants India to be the net security provider of Indian Ocean which uh, we are more than happy uh, to take this challenge and take this post as far as we are being provided with technology and other assistance uh, because uh, remember USA as well here you have uh, some islands here uh, that are being jointly operated by USA as well as UK and uh, then we recently had this quad right uh, you have japan usa australia and india in this quadrilateral and of course this quadrilateral is uh, to ensure that china is not um, it's not being too aggressive with its its expansionist uh, theory or its uh, expansionism or colonialism the way it is colonizing all these small countries uh, if you go back to the history of Indian Navy and role of India, then um, I would like to give you one example, couple of examples. Uh, let's uh, throw a couple of examples here. See, when we had this uh, uh, tsunami of 2004, at that point of time, it was Indian Navy, right, uh, that assisted many countries of ASEAN, particularly Thailand and Indonesia and Sri Lanka. Apart from that, uh, back in 2015, uh, right, uh, this this uh, country of uh, country of Yemen right the country here and here you have Aden port that, that's that is the reason why this portion is known as Gulf of Aden and uh, here uh, it was bombarded by Saudi Arabia and at that point of time many many overseas citizens right uh, Indian citizens as well as uh, citizens from uh, developed countries like USA UK and other countries right they were um, they were a bit uh, in a trouble in this part in Aden and at that point of time, it was Indian Navy uh, that rescued them and uh, they were brought to this country here, Djibouti. And at that point of time, the whole world praised the role that was played by India and Indian Navy. So you can understand uh, the role that India can play and how it can add soft power as well as uh, hard power. Uh, when we have this sort of uh, boats uh, being inducted in our Indian Navy, there are many other operations uh, in future that we have to do. And for that, we need the best possible technology that is available in the market and uh, one more thing that is uh, generally this sort of things are not uh, taken uh, during analysis but i would like to add here and i would uh, reckon you all uh, i would reckon that you give some sort of serious thinking on this thing as well that we know that uh, we have uh, uh, designed this uh, or we have built this ins calvary with the help of uh, french uh, technology isn't it we have uh, got some assistance from uh, France and we know that France is a developed country and it has all these latest gadgets and warfare things so when we are uh, when we are finishing a project with uh, a country uh, such as France uh, then we are adding more skills right we are adding more feathers 
um, in our head and uh, this is in fact an asset the the skill that we have accumulated during the manufacturing of this INS Calvary is an asset for India and we can use this asset for our future missions so I hope uh, these things are clear to you now uh, I believe that uh, the importance of uh, INS Calvary is uh, well understood by all of you and uh, before uh, ending this lecture I would uh, like to remind you again about the pen drive and tablet courses uh, that we offer make sure you check out studyiq.com and uh, dear friends uh, make sure to subscribe our uh, youtube channel right uh, there are many more interesting videos available on our youtube channel you can download this uh, pdf uh, from my facebook page which is uh, prashant t mamani and uh, make sure you share it with other people as well with this dear friends i end this discussion here i hope you all have learned and enjoyed our today's interaction Enjoy your studies. Jai Hind.